Hi, I'm Wizzy Hat G or Wizzy, and this is my guide to the Fortis Coliseum and how to get yourself a Dizano's Quiver. Uh, I'm just making this because there really aren't any guides out there, and I want to put something out there for people who are looking for some help getting their quiver. I'm not really a guide maker, so it's it's going to be pretty rough, and I'm doing it on one take, so hopefully it goes well. So I put this together. Uh, we're going to start by going through the NPCs, and feel free to fast forward if you don't want to, don't care about something. First NPC is the Fremenic Warband. There's three of them, a Ranger, a Major, and a Melier. And we're generally going to open every wave with a Shadow, Vendor, SGS to take care of them. And there's going to be a lot of information below on how to use the Metronome plugin to help avoid their attacks. We're going to use a specific tick cycle. And I'm showing that on screen now. I'll also put this uh, little picture that I put up in the description. Then there's the Serpent Shaman. Uh, not very interesting, just a... Uh, one by one mage. He has a 10 tile attack range, so sometimes you can uh, outrange him, which is very handy. The Jaguar Warrior has extremely high DPS if you let him get to you. He is a 2x2 two two melee. Uh, very dangerous if you, if you let him get close to you, but you can be safe spotted. The Javelin Colossus is the ranger. He has a very long attack range. Every fifth attack, he's going to throw a Javelin up in the air and it will land on where you are one tick after his attack. And if you have the re-entry uh, invocation on, then it's going to be very important to set it up properly. The Manticore is very complicated. Uh, he is a tribrid. He attacks with all three styles. He has a five-tick cycle, where he'll start by, with one style, then the other, then melee, then two ticks without doing anything. You can either go Mage, Range, Melee, or Range, Mage, Melee. If there are two Manticores that both are on the same attack cycle, they will offset each other so that instead of attacking twice at the same time every 10 ticks, they will each attack 5 ticks offset. So you'll only have 2 ticks of downtime. Ordinarily, you'll actually have 7 ticks of downtime because Every 10 ticks, he will do his 3 tick long attack. If you don't have them see you at the same time, then they can offset from each other, and that's not good. You'll basically immediately die. What you can do to fix this is make sure that both manticores, if, they're, if you're in a wave with multiple, are charged up at the same time. When you first encounter a manticore, he can only attack you after he has had, has had an initial 10 ticks to charge up his attacks. His first attack doesn't happen, and he'll spend the first 10 ticks uh, just sort of looking at you, getting ready to attack. So you need to make sure that both manticores, if there are ways with two of them, are, are both ready to attack, or else they're not going to same tick with each other. You can use this, and you will use this very, very often, as I'll talk about later, to avoid damage while running between pillars because you can essentially run from one pillar to the other without taking damage the shockwave colossus is a 15 or 16 tile long ranger a uh, major sorry uh with no real special abilities the minotaur is a three by three every 10 ticks he will try to heal any damaged npc within five tiles of him in any direction he moves at run speed so you got to watch out Soul Heredit is the boss. I'm not going to go into much detail on it because I'm not very good at him. Uh, I think Mulvo Kirby is making a guide soon. Uh, the one thing is to turn area sounds on or else you won't hear his attacks for some reason. What I did to kill this boss when I got my KC was essentially following this, which I'm showing on screen now, and literally saying out loud what my next movement would be. And that, and that did the job for me, so I'd highly recommend it. Now running through, some invo running through the invocations, Never ever pick these Doom, Scorpion, or Totemic. They will just screw you over. The best invocations are Myopia and Solar Flare 1 or 2. Myopia reduces your attack range by 2, then 4, then 6 ticks, but that's not a big deal because it doesn't apply to magic spells, including autocast. As long as you're paying attention, then you're never going to have any issues because you're always free to just auto-cast Ice Barrage instead of Shadowing, which is what you're going to do a lot, I should tell you. Solar Flare 1 and 2 
uh, have orbs circling the pillars, but they are really not hard to dodge, and at worst case scenario, you can just tank the damage. It's not a big deal. Blasphemy and Reentry 1 are pretty good. Blasphemy will drain your prayer whenever you take damage. It's basically a smite or deadly prayers from your, your term team spam basket. But you're bringing in a lot of extra resource to offset this, and it doesn't actually do damage, so it's pretty good in that sense. It won't ever kill you. And if you're taking enough damage to smite yourself from full prayer, you're already dead. So it has less downside than you might think. Reentry 1 will rag a tile after the javelin's javelin throw attack for the remainder of the wave, but it doesn't carry over. You can work with this as long as it's level 1. At higher levels, it becomes a big problem. Dynamic Duo is pretty good after wave 8, because the only other major that's going to spawn is on wave 11. If you have this for wave 7 and 8, then it does a lot more damage to you and can kind of mess up those waves, so it's worth considering not taking that. Quartet and Relentless are both pretty good. Quartet spawns a fourth Fremenic, and that's really just not a big deal. You can generally handle it. It's, it's, not, the, it's not the best, but it's not too bad to take. Relentless uh, makes it so that all of your opponents have 100% accuracy, and they get a minimum hit. That does a lot of damage, probably more than you might think, because oftentimes you will actually take natural zeros by the NPCs failing their accuracy roll. So you will take quite a bit more damage with this, and in combination with Blasphemy, they'll smite you a lot more too. So you can take it, but it's, it's very risky, and you have to be ready for it. Reentry 2 and 3 are, are quite ri ri risky. The only real time you want to take Reentry 2, in my opinion, for a first KC, is on wave 11. Because on wave 11, it's basically the same thing as Reentry 1. As long as you don't rag the middle, it's not a big deal. Red Flag gives the Minotaur, which we talked about earlier, smart pathing. He will never get safe spot. He will never get stuck. You can still line of sight him over NPCs, but he will always path around if he is possible for him to do so. It's okay if you're really ready for it, but I would not recommend it for a first KC. It's quite handy on a melee setup, but for a mage camp, it's not very good. So gear and inventory, I have that here, but I can also bring it over to in-game. The basic setup that we are going to go for is a combination of mage and melee. We are going to basically carry our melee switch through the entire raves and more or less never use it in my opinion. And then it is only really used for the boss, which you have to use a slash weapon for. So what my setup was, was a very hefty mage setup, but with a decent amount of melee, you can see obviously that I'm going to be camped with the Infernal Cape, Guardian Boots, which give prayer, and the Nate is not face guard. As well, I'm bringing in a Falador Shield, because I don't have a better one. I would actually recommend this over anything besides either an Elijah or an Illidanus Ward. Realistically, the only other attacks you're going to take are Mage off Prey. You could even take a Spectral, but you may end up taking Relentless anyway. And the Falader Shield is basically a prayer potion that you wear in. And you're bringing an, uh, an auto-casting weapon anyway, so you need to bring a shield. An auto-cast weapon is very important because with Myopia, which you'll be picking basically whenever you can, you can bring it in for... It, you uh, will be camping Ice Barrage, and you don't want to be manually casting while you're prayer flicking. That's just going to get you killed. Then as you can see in my inventory, I have a decent amount of Bruise and Restores. You'll have to play with your own ratios. I went for a Ring Swap because I kind of liked it. A lot of people will take Light Bearer instead, but it's not my thing. And then up here at the top, I have my Imbued Heart, which I'm basically camping because I'm camping Mage. A Venator Bow with Dragon Arrows, and a two-way SGS and Ultra Ring Switch. You can replace this with the Ferocious Gloves if you take a Light Bearer. At the start of every wave, as you'll see in the video, which I'll be talking about talking over next, you're going to start with your heart, you will kill the Melier, then you'll pull out your Venator Bow with, pot, with Rigor on, 
and shoot the major with the dragon arrows at 99 range unpotted with rigor on a dragon arrow vendor bow will always max hit a 50 on the bounce from the mage and then back to the ranger and then back to the mage with amethyst arrows it does not work you always have to bring dragon and then i have the ultra ring and the sgs to one shot the ranger sometimes you actually won't want to because if you hit say a 49 instead of a 50 then you get another full spec off something to bear in mind very situational as for how to adapt your gear you can upgrade or downgrade based off of this however you like but but the bottom line your theme should be a mage switch a mage setup but with some melee gear on where you don't sacrifice too much magic dps a melee switch they use for the end and your heart your sgs and your vendor bow that'll get the job done Ah, sorry, no, I had this open, my bad. I'm very not used to making beds. Now the plugins that I used, which you'll also see in my full video, which I'll be going over shortly, I used Menu Entry Swapper to shift-click walk here on the Fremedix. It's very important to use this while you're dancing them, as we'll talk about later, because you're going to be moving around a lot and you want to be able to walk without having to right-click. And They move very quickly and they can sort of get in the way of your yellow click. I use normal metronome just as a one tick metronome. I like that for the Inferno and this, the prayer flicking sort of activities. I use a six tick visual metronome with three ticks of green, three ticks of red, and the metronome tick number. With this setup, you always click continue on the third tick, and then you will move from the B5 tile where we're going to start every wave to the safe spot where we're going to pull everything at the start of every wave on the next two. This will mean that nothing can actually attack us until it has walked around the safe spot and nothing can spawn all the way on the southwest. And that's, I'll link B5's Reddit post where he explains how this all works. But essentially, we use a very specific tick perfect wave setup to get into every wave, and that makes it so much easier. Then, once we're in the wave, we can look at our metronome counter down here. And as long as we click continue on turn three, then we can attack the Fremenix whenever this is green on ticks one, two, or three, and we will not get hit by them because they have a static six, six tick attack cycle based on the wave start time. So we are going to be running around like this, just basically pretty crazy. And then once we are able to attack Fremenic on a green tick, we'll click and then we'll keep moving. And that lets us stop them from ever having a chance to damage us. I use better NPC highlight to highlight the NPCs. I use presets to color the basically every NPC, the Fremenix, the Mages, the Ranges, and the Manticores with their respective attack style color. This is very helpful to immediately read the wave, the wave setup and react accordingly. In the Inferno, you'll generally always be throwing an Ice Barrage and then going back behind the North Pillar. But in the Colosseum, you need to react immediately and set up an off tick or make a pillar run without losing any time. It's very important to react immediately, and the colors help with that. I also use, I don't actually have it in here, but I have ticked the option. Let me find it. No, I can't find it. Uh, but I use the option to color the menu names at the bottom. And that means that when you right click the Fremenix, you can always attack the one with the style that you want. It's very helpful. So now I'm, oh, sorry, Watchdog plugin. The Watchdog plugin is the last plugin I used. You'll see it in my uh, Fight with Soul Heritage. I play with the chat box hidden for pretty much all PVM. So I had a lot of trouble understanding Soul Heritage's grapple attack. I wish Shavix would stop putting such important information in the chat box because it's really very annoying to look at. So I made Watchdog notifications 
which give me a much more usable alert. I'll demonstrate it now, I hope, where it'll look like this. And that makes it so much easier to react to. And I have that linked in the description as well. So now I'm going to stop this part of the guide and I'm going to do a full commentary over my run just to talk about the things that I do and, and why I make those decisions. So I'll see you then. Hi, uh, this is Wizzy again. This is part two of the guide. Here I'm just going to be talking through my successful Coliseum run and sort of walking through my decisions and hopefully you can learn something. Obviously, I'm not very good at the Coliseum, but I just wanted to put this out there so that you can get some idea, hopefully. So, first of all, we are going to pick Blasphemy for Wave 1, but otherwise, I'm just going to skip to Wave 2 because Wave 1 is, is kind of a joke wave. It's just not very interesting, and there's really nothing to learn from it. Now, Wave 2, what are our options? up and choose. You can pick Solar Flare. I believe that's Quartet or Relentless. Solar Flare is a really good invocation to pick. And our invocation picks are very important early because you are more likely to be offered the same invocation again. Quartet is a solid pick, but Quartet doesn't have a sequel. And we would much prefer to pick Solar Flare now so we have a higher chance of getting Solar Flare later. Now what I'm going to do is wait until the visual metronome tick in the bottom right here goes to a three, and then I'm going to click continue. And we're starting this on the B5 safe spot start tile, as you can see here. Now when this goes to two, I am going to click on the west side of the northwest pillar and turn my prayer on. And as you'll see, nothing can attack me until I am behind the pillar. And I attack the melee Fremenic with my shadow, and I'm using shift click to run around behind this pillar and hopefully not be attacked by anything. I have rigor on, and now on a green visual metronome tick, I am clicking the mage Fremenic, and the ricochet from the Venerable will one-shot it. Then I am moving again. And I am getting my SGS with the Ultra Ring on. And I am SGS specking the range from it. You want to do this every single wave. It gives you a lot of HP and it completely deals with the Fremenics. It is the start that you want to go for every time. Then I'm just going to clear this wave. I do get the ads, but I'm able to lock it off over there. Now here, I can either pick Blasphemy again, Frailty, or Solar Flare. Blasphemy basically does nothing in the early game because you're not going to take much damage. So it's always a strong pick. The Solar Flare is not bad either. And then as you can see, I essentially do the exact same thing. And I'm able to solve the wave without any issues. And before the Jaguar st sets up, which is always going to be on a three tick, for what it's worth, with this setup, whenever it'll be on the same six tick cycle tick as when you click to continue, I believe 72 ticks after the wave begins, it spawns, but I'm already standing in a safe spot, so I'm ready for it, and that way I don't have to worry about reacting. To it. Now I can either pick Quartet, these, and I believe this is Relentless. Quartet is a solid choice, and given there's nothing else better, we definitely want to go for Quartet here. Now Wave 4 is going to have a Manticore and a Mage, so we're going to be ready to pray Mage, but oftentimes you won't have to do anything. I believe in this case the Serpent Shaman does come around though, and that's totally fine. We're going to start seeing a Serpent Shaman spawn, but that's not the end of, with the Jaguar, but that's not an issue. We're just going to deal with it. Here in this wave, we actually got a double Archer. This is part of why Quartet is so good, because the Archer's max hit is one. So it's really not a big deal to get two of them. And as you saw with our wave star, we can generally just handle any doubled up Fremenic. 
You can see over to the east, there's a manticore that's stuck. It spawned in the far east, and because of our wave star, it pathed directly northwest and is now blocked behind the east, northeast pillar. This is going to come up a lot. It's why this star is so good. And it does not have line of sight of us. It won't even have line of sight of us if we go south of this pillar. As long as we don't go three or more tiles out, as long as we're in these two tiles, we'll be totally fine. And you'll see that we do have Solar Flare up, but I don't think it hits us at all in this run. As long as you're sort of mindful of it, it's really not a big deal. Then after we've finished everything else, we pull the Manticore over and get ready for the next wave, and then we can attack the Manticore. As you saw, it sees us, in the first 10 ticks, it's not doing anything. It's charging up. We have to be ready to look at its animation, and when it starts, we just follow the orbs, age, range, melee, and it's very easy to deal with. Here, we're pretty much forced into blasphemy again. We don't want volatile because it's it's quite punishing if you mess it up. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure I talked about volatile in my guide, but what can you do? Don't pick it. And totem is really awful, so we're forced into blasphemy 3 already by wave 5. This isn't great, but it's still deal with it, because as long as you don't take much damage, Blastery doesn't really do anything. Now here in Wave 5, we have Range, Mage, and a Manticore. But with this start, oftentimes, pretty much always, there will be an offset. Here, we only see the Mage on our side of the pillar, so it's essentially a free wave. We have two Magicians from the Fremenix. But with our vendor bow tech, we can basically just spam it, and we're pretty much good to go. I did mess up there and take a melee hit by the Fremenic, but it's not a big deal. And then we can keep going and just stall. And you'll see here, when I have a Serpent Shaman trapped behind a 3x3 NPC, you are able to outdistance it by standing back over here to the far west or on various other sides of other pillars and just kill the front NPC. If Myopia is on, you'll need to auto-cast. Except, if Myopia 1 is on, you can stand on these ex this exact row and still shadow, and attack the front NPC and not get attacked by the Shaman. Now, Wave 6 can be... Okay, let's go back. You can either pick Relentless, Myopia, or Solar Flare. Myopia is the best invocation. You always want it if you can get it. And you should pick it immediately so that you have a higher chance of seeing it more often. Now we're going into, so we pick it. We're going into wave six, which is a very scary wave for a lot of people. But realistically, it's the exact same thing as wave five. All you have to do is pray range and deal with things. There's two rangers, but you should always be praying against them. So it's not a big deal. We're going to count into the 3 tick to get a good wave start. We're going to move on tick 2. And we actually got a very spoon spot on this one. We have the mage isolated, but we can pray against it, and even with the adds, we won't have any issues. I do actually mess up the Fremnix quite a few times on this run, and it's really not a big deal. Let's see, we get a very nice heal with the SGS. And now we are going to kill the Shaman. We're pulling it over for Myopia. It's not actually a big issue with Myopia 1, but you do have to be careful. With Myopia 3, you can pull any NPC that spawns to the east into at least this, air, this line and this tile, and then you can attack them with a shadow from specifically the south side of this pillar, or the, the close side of any pillar. You have to be very careful with Myopia not to get dragged out. Now, after we handle the ads, we're going to do a, a tactical pillar transition. It's basically the opposite of the Inferno. and in the Inferno, you generally want to stay north. But here, you pretty much always want to be moving between pillars to make the solves easier. So we're going to deal with the ads. Now, with a three stack east of you and a man manticore that hasn't seen you yet, the three stat, the rangers are going to be able to attack, but we're actually able to run directly from pillar to pillar without the manticore getting a shot off. 
You just have to go from the same side of the pillar to the same side of the pillar. For example, we're going to depart from the southwest corner of the pillar over here and go past the southwest corner of the southeastern pillar and the manticore won't hit us. We cannot go around the northeast corner from the southwest. That will take too long and we will get hit. But here, we can avoid having to off-tick this stack by just doing a run and nothing will hit us. As you can see right about here, we time the solar flare so that it'll land on a good tick and not be in our way. And the manticore is now charging up, but it's not able to attack. And now very important, after our southeast run, we stand on the middle tile. Now the Colossus on the right, on the east side, is going to line up on the eastern two tiles here, which means that the Colossus on the west can still get stuck on the western side. And this way, the two far things on the eastern stack are now both blocked, and we can isolate the Manticore and deal with them. And then once we've killed the Manticore, we pull everything back towards our start area so that we can start on the tile we want to. You can see I'm dodging the re-entries. Now here we have either Volatile again, which we don't want, Solar Flare, or Myopia. Both of these are amazing picks, but we definitely want Myopia whenever we can get it. Now here for Wave 6, we're go for into Wave 7, we'll have the better Mage. The Shockwave Mage has a higher max hit, but I believe it is less accurate when you're wearing robes than the Ranger. I still pray mage, but I'm not sure actually which is better, frankly. But hopefully you won't have to take an off prey hit from either because you'll be able to react and pray in time. Because we are going to click in on three and go. I started here. A lot of AFKing and a lot of thinking uh, during my grind I have. Right? And here it's a kind of spoon. We only have the manticore. Everything else is isolated. So we can still dance our Fremenix and finish them off. The Manticore is just another NPC, and as long as you pay attention, you can flick the Manticore while doing other stuff. So here we're going to run around, we're going to take our time nice and slow, and we're going to be ready for the Manticore. Get an SGS off, and we get our triple flick. And now we pull into this corner here, and, we, and by standing on this tile, the east spawn manticore lines up onto this line. And we can now myopia attack it from the south side. We don't actually need to because this is only myopia 2. But for myopia 3, that would be necessary. Now we're going to get a minotaur to spawn. It's no longer a jaguar warrior, it's a minotaur. And in order to make sure there's no funny business with him getting stuck behind the Shockwave Colossus, we're going to stand on the southernmost line over here. And this way, this sort of forms a single unbroken wall that the Minotaur can line up on and move through without any issues. That makes more sense on more complicated stacks, but it's a good habit to get him. Now, you can see there are six tiles between the Minotaur and the Manticore here, so the Minotaur actually won't be able to heal it. But if the Minotaur could, then we would just have to kill the Minotaur first. Not a big deal. And once we kill the Manticore, we did take some hits, so we're just going to Blood Barrage to full. Not a big deal. And we have plenty to work with. And now, the Colossus, all the way up to the east, is does not have uh, attack range on us because he is stuck on the northeastern pillar. So we can deal with the mage, and then we're going to pull through the Colossus and, and the wave. Now we can pick between Solar Flare, Myopia 3, or Doom. And again, Myopia is super free, so we'll take it. And this is uh, not a very difficult wave. It's basically the same thing as the last, just prey range. And here again, I got a berry spoon spawn, and it's super easy to deal with. And that's one thing I just want to admit, and I think anybody who's done uh, a few KCs will agree with this, or at least somebody who's done not that many KCs. Fundamentally, some spawns are really good, and some spawns aren't, and you're going to get your first KC, and maybe even a few more KCs, on really lucky spawns. You can see that I messed up the myopia there, and I got dragged out. 
unfortunately I didn't get punished, but you got to be careful about that. And as I was saying, accept the fact that you're going to get your first KC on a really lucky spawn. That's okay. If you get a bad spawn, that just happens. And if you see somebody's video and they got a really good spawn on all their waves and they got the cape, uh, then of course they did, because you need to get some luck in order to, to make this work for the first time, to be honest. And there's only 12 waves, so you will get luck eventually. Now I'm getting ready for the Manticore here, and you can see I walk all the way north. That this Javelin Colossus lines up with the Shockwave Colossus, and the Manticore can't get stuck on this corner, hopefully. But I believe I messed this up right here. I, I think I messed this up. But we'll see. Yes, I did. But there is a solve for this. You can see that this Manticore is blocking the Javelin. And now the north side is mage only. So once we finish killing this Javelin, we can just go up here and mage Shockwave. And in this clip, we got quite lucky, and it's going to naturally off-tick. But if these didn't off-tick, and the, the sh Javelin and Shockwave and Manticore were there without the Minotaur, the solve for this would be to stand on this tile, one west of the middle, run south to one, and pray mage, range melee, and then back to range to do a double off tick of the manticore uh, an on an off tick flick of the manticore and the javelin i'd highly recommend going to we do raids discord and looking at their guides for inferno offsets specifically wave 65 because a lot of the coliseum is fundamentally a wave 65 of the inferno in terms of off ticking so a lot of the stuff there the the more niche salts that don't come up very often in the inferno come up a lot here by the way, I'm using Ice Barrage because I have Myopia on, and I don't want to give the Javelin Colossus line of sight. And here it's just going to solve itself. I actually make a mistake, but it's not a big deal. And I'm able to clear the entire wave. I believe it went for an SGS there because it took so long. But the reason I don't like the Light Barrier tech is because often I find there's not much reason to use the SGS, so there aren't a good, any good avenues to use. It. I prefer the Magus Alter. Now, for Wave 8, we have Frailty, Dynamic Duo, or Solar Flare. Both of these are actually really good, but as you notice, this is like the fourth time we've been offered Solar Flare. It really loves to give you Tier 2s. So instead, we're going to pick Dynamic Duo now because we might not get offered it again, and it's really high value to take it as soon as possible. Whereas Solar Flare, we're going to be offered it again, I'm sure. Now let's see this wave start. Start on three, get a good start. And this is actually another lucky wave. Uh, again, obviously, it's, the successful first clear is going to be a lucky wave. We are dancing the Manticore. We are dancing the Fremenix. We deal with the Manticore. And we can just proceed. Now we're going to kill the Manticore and also the Minotaur. And for this off tick, it is possible that the Manticore might start with range, in which case it would just naturally off-tick. But we don't need to do this by RNG. We can instead just run southeast here, and they will off-tick. So that's what we're going to do. And we won't let the, man the Manticore, man Manticore will not get a hit off on us. We'll take no damage. Just book it all the way southeast. And you can see, they are offset. And we reset. Now wave 9 is complete. Here, we can either take Doom or Doom Scorpion, which are both run enders, so we have to take Solar Flare. Very easy choice. And we're going to start this on the 3 tick. This is a very complicated wave, uh, but sometimes you get a good spawn, sometimes you don't. Now here we have Manticore as well, however, because this is wave 10, there's going to be a Serpent Shaman along with the Minotaur that spawns after 72 ticks. 
We have to be ready to off tick that or hope that it naturally off ticks. Because people would not want you to know this, but there's an 80% chance that two five tick NPCs will off tick from each other. And I believe that in this case, I just got lucky and they did off tick. And again, your first run, you're going to get some luck. The Colosseum is short enough that you can expect some luck. I am too slow to get my spec off there, unfortunately. Here I'm going to pull the Manticore in again. If I was a good player, I would have set this up intentionally, but I didn't. Uh, I just kind of got lucky. Make some mistakes. And I do actually get the off deck. You can't force it with the, the walks down, but I'll be honest, I just looped this one. Now here I'm at quite low HP, but as long as I maintain my rhythm of the double off tick with the 5 tick shaman and the 10 tick manticore, as long as they're not overlapping, and here they are same ticked on mage, then I can just stay low HP, it's not a big deal. Now here's a unique interaction. I don't have line of sight on the minotaur, I only have line of sight on the shaman. I can't safely get to the minotaur, and the shaman is going to keep healing from the minotaur every 10 ticks, as you'll see now. What I could do is just auto-cast on the shaman, and the shaman is adjacent to the minotaur's southwest tile, so I am AoE blood barraging on the minotaur. And you can see I do all sorts of checking to see if I can solve it, but fundamentally the solve is just use the ice brush AoE. And now here, very important, range minotaur range stack. For a three stack where there are three NPCs on the east side of the pillar, you can block the back two of them on the north side of the southeast pillar, and the southern one will get through. That's what we're going to see here. And it's a nice, easy solve. Now, wave 11. You can either pick Solar Flare. Oh, sorry, wave 10. Now, into wave 11, we can either click Solar Flare 3, which I don't like because it disables your prayers, these, which are terrible, or Relentless 1. And we've been able to dodge Relentless, but now we kind of have to take it. And at this point, it's not going to be too much of a big deal either way. So now into wave 11. This has a lot of danger. It's going to be double mage, double manticore, and ranger. So we're probably going to open with a prey mage, and we'll just see what happens. And actually, in this run, we got a very spooned uh, waves as well. But really, a lot of people's first kisses are spooned waves. And yours will be too. And there's nothing wrong with that. Here we have the ranger. And we're going to need to off tick him with the mage reinforcement. Except we're actually able to out DPS, and that can happen, and that's why we have Augury on. Though so it would have actually off to anyway, for what it's worth. And you can see the Minotaur is safe spotted. Now we'll just kill the Minotaur and the Serpent Shaman. And now here, unlike before, where we had a 3 East stack, here we have a 2x2. Two two. And for a 2x2, two two, if we ran to the Southeast, then we would have to deal with both the Manticore and the Shockwave, unless we do a kind of elaborate run to the east side, actually, where we could handle both, but I'd rather not do that. So instead, for this 2x2 two two setup, we are just going to run to the, to the southwest pillar instead. Makes it much easier. And as you'll see, the western row of two translate to this pillar, in the eastern row is going to come down the side. Now, if this had been Manticore Colossus and then Manticore Colossus, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. I have not slept very much, frankly, since the update came out. Uh, not doing the best. Then we would have had to go southeast, but for this stack, we can go over here. And then we proceed to get the solve. And I believe we take Relentless 2 here. We also path around for a bit and do some research. We pre-pot, get our audio on, and get ready to go. We do have Quartet, so we do actually get a mage. 
but we're not going to switch out of our, our melee switch. We're just going to scythe it and it'll die pretty quickly. It just doesn't have very high defense, so we can just scythe it. So I accidentally paused it. Uh, we pray mage and we pray mage. We pray mage and we're going to scythe it. And I messed up the first attack. I am using the tech that I have in this paint document that I showed earlier in the first half of the video and actually speaking out loud to myself. That's about all the advice I can give on the Herod. I'm just not very good at him. I believe Mulvote Kirby again is going to be making a guide on the boss fight soon. And this video is more just showing how I approach the waves. But that's basically all there is to it. Just follow this Imker and, and do your best. It took me three tries. And frankly, I don't think the boss is the hard part. I believe that getting good spawns and dealing with your spawns effectively is the tricky part. But also, I don't think that Colosseum is nearly as difficult as Inferno personally, uh, because it's just so much more approachable and that you can move through. And realistically, if you do it properly and you have your Blood Scepter that's overhealing you into every wave, you see I started this with eight brews, and I am just going to turbo chug every single one of those and keep moving forward. And as you saw here, I have the watchdog notification that I'll be linking in the description. This alert means that when Sol does his grab attack, I don't have my chat box open. I don't play with it. And I can't even see what he's saying because of the camera angle. So instead, I have my notification over here and I'm able to properly parry it. Very important, and I strongly, strongly recommend you use this watchdog. And I wish Jagex would stop making these terrible mechanics that you can't even see. Uh, it, it's really quite ridiculous. Anyway, I kind of messed up the entire boss, but it's, it's a real disaster, frankly. But I have enough food, because I played the waves pretty well and I got good spawns, that I don't have any issues. I, in all of my boss fights, I got to the boss with six seven eight brews and the reason for this is because i have the blood scepter very important item it lets me overheal to 108 at the start of every wave and that really makes it possible to get the wave into a manageable spot where you can then blood barrage your hp back up without any issues and yeah just ignore this horrible boss but i will not be teaching you how to do it because i barely know myself and try to not do whatever i'm doing here frankly. Gotta react faster. The one tip I would add is do the speak out loud tech that I do show in this document. It really helped me a lot. And just try to do that. Send a few tries. Your first boss will be a disaster. But after that, you'll get it together. So that's about all I have for you. And I hope this helps your, you. And I'm going to be putting all that stuff in the description if I remember. And I do thank you for sticking with us. I don't really make guides, and I'm sure this video is going to be terrible, but I don't think there are really many options out now, and I wanted to put something quick together that you'd have uh, something to help you out. Thanks for watching.